Remember the good old days on MySpace and Tumblr where we could customize the HTML and CSS of our pages? Wouldn't it be cool if we could do that on a developer platform like GitHub? Well, they don't want us to, but that did not stop friend of the channel Cloud from finding some crazy exploits with CSS on GitHub. You might have seen on Twitter over the last few days that a lot of people are doing wild things. Here is a pretty basic anime image being plastered on the back. Oh, you have been doing a lot crazier stuff like Yaxine, who's a lunatic. <laughs> Just qual does this not just immediately give you flashbacks to the OG MySpace days? Because that's all I can think of when I see this. People did some crazy stuff. This was a wild journey from how it was found to how it was disclosed to how quickly it was fixed. And then a new exploit was found yet again. It was a wonderful ride. And I wanted to go through it piece by piece because I think this is really cool. So without further ado, let's dive in. Huge shout out again to VX Underground, Cloud, Eva, and everybody else involved with finding these exploits and getting me all the info I need to cover this. I am confident nobody else is going to cover this in as much detail simply because I'm in a group chat with them and they're sharing this in as clear and concise a way as possible. So again, all their links will be in the bio. Check them out if you can. I think they're awesome people. Cool. So this all started with Cloud's original tweet. Casual CSS injection on GitHub using math mode. I could phrase this in my own words, but I think it's much better to use the email that they sent to GitHub. So basically, I first posted this on Twitter. I know that's a bad way to disclose it, but my initial attempts at sending post requests or attempting to leverage it into something bigger, like an XSS, failed, so I decided to post about it for fun. Also, all stuff like IP grabbers were out of question due to course. But then people started abusing it with like images covering the whole viewport, which is not cool. I know that one person supposedly managed to cause a post request to log out using an open redirect that works from GitHub internal domains, but I don't know the details of that, and even if it's a hoax, so yeah, what they're saying here specifically is that they went public because they didn't see any way for this to be abused. What they realized is if you use these exploits to render a giant image that looks like GitHub and put bindings on buttons when they click, theoretically, you'd be able to get someone to click on something to trigger an action like a post request that you wouldn't want people to be able to do to take over the site. So that's why there was a legitimate security risk here, which resulted in them patching it fast, and also with Cloud being so clear with their disclosure here. I think this is a great responsible disclosure, especially if you thought this was a funny little thing and then learned there was potential risk. All A plus in my book. As for other fun ways to exploit, the most prominent one would still be social engineering by serving a carefully crafted SVG resembling some other GitHub sites. But I haven't seen anyone do this in the short time that it was live. Here's actually the Mathematica, the math syntax code that they used to do this. Apparently, you can escape from math code with Unicode and embed CSS here, and any image hosted on a GitHub domain would work there. As long as you close it out this way, this would work and let you do things with CSS on the page. Pretty crazy that, once again, math has doomed us all, that it's math syntax being exploited to make this work in the first place. GitHub has ruined Christmas. The CSS injection has been patched. The following macros are not allowed. Unicode. Again, it was embedding Unicode inside of the CE, like math syntax that lets you escape in this way. Imagine you're building a Lego castle and there's a secret tunnel. We call it a vulnerability that people can use to change things in your castle. In this case, the castle is a GitHub profile and the sneaky tricks use something called LaTeX. Uh, good old LaTeX. Anybody else here also use LaTeX to format all their research papers in college because they were a fucking tool? Because I know I did, even though I had no math in them, I just wanted to be cool and have my papers all be in code. Here's how the trick works. Normally, LaTeX is used to write cool math functions, but we found a way to put in some special code that tells the profile to load something called CSS, which changes how things look, making your Lego bricks shiny or colorful. I'd hope everybody here knows what CSS is at the least, even if you don't know LaTeX. When GitHub sees the payload, it tries to understand the LaTeX, but instead, it ends up loading the CSS, changing the profile in ways it wasn't supposed to. The slash CE is a command in LaTeX that usually helps to write chemical equations. Think of it like a special Lego brick that does something cool. Yeah, that makes sense. And since this has to do a bunch of CSS stuff in order to make a thing as complex as a chemical equation work right, it's a good opportunity to inject things. This code is even more fun because normally in LaTeX, the slash symbol starts a command, but here it's written in a way that sneaks it past some checks. It's like hiding a Lego piece in a way that the rules of the game don't notice. Yeah, this is an encoded slash that LaTeX won't try to interpret, which means you can sneak it in as text. Unicode, Goomba font, CSS here. This part is like giving special instructions to the Lego brick. It's saying, hey, use this special font, Goomba font, to escape the default context and also add this CSS, CSS here. The CSS is the part that changes how the things look on your profile. File. And then here, the x0000, this part is like the target of the Unicode character, but instead we're putting the four zeros, which is empty. So it's using the chemical equation binding to escape Unicode out and then render CSS on your page. Great breakdown. Thank you to VMFunk for this. Oh, you're already following me. I feel bad for not following you back. Yeah. Back to the timeline though. 
This is again from the team, so doing my best to cover this as accurately as possible. Cloud posted the initial payload after finding it and showed it on Twitter. It grabbed a lot of attention. Other people jumped in and started experimenting. They realized the risks, so they messaged GitHub security. Then it got patched. And then Inu found another workaround using the HTML escaped backslash instead. Because again, you saw the early example that we had. It didn't have anything special with the Unicode slash here. But they figured out if they use this, it would skip past the checks that they had added. So this let them keep exploiting the bug later on. Apparently, the second one gets patched or the third one is found first, but the final exploit they found has also now been patched by GitHub. So all of the different ways they found to do this have been checked and fixed finally. And yes, they were patching all of this late on a Friday night. So honestly, shout out to the GitHub people who took this seriously. It's funny because GitHub's notorious for not really fixing bugs particularly quick, but it seems like they handled this one well, and I'm impressed with them. If they would take other things a little more seriously like this, it'd be nice, but it's cool that when this real potential security risk here was discovered, that they handled it. I still can't believe this is real. I love that the Weeb hacker community has found such a crazy way to bring us back in the MySpace era. That was super fun. It's rare we get an exploit that's this innocent and just fun to play with. Huge shout out to Eva. God, I'm so bad at names as soon as I have to like do it. Okay, Mel, Cloud, and Eva. Cool, third time's a charm. Mel, Cloud, Eva, and Shrek, God damn it. Check out all their Twitters, give them a follow. This was super, super fun. Until next time, peace, nerds. We need to make a Chrome extension to bring it back. Oh, God, no, please, no.